West. Super West, that is. In this video, I want to talk about which oxygen device is most appropriate and in which situation to use it. First of all, in an emergency, use a non-rebreather. This is considered a high flow device. It gives the patient all the oxygen that they need. When you attach it to the oxygen, use 15 to 60 liters per minute of oxygen with it. It is for high O2 demands and in emergencies. I consider this device 100% oxygen. It has a reservoir bag to hold any excess oxygen, so when they breathe in, it'll pull it in. There are two little one-way valves, one on each side. Take one off so the patient can still get regular air if it becomes disconnected. Some people will take off both sides and call it a partial rebreather and give it some other percentage. I don't believe that's accurate. The only time I use this is, in, is if they have a high O2 need, I want to give them 100%. It, in an emergency, if your patient's SATs are really low, don't waste time starting with the nasal cannula, then waiting to see if it comes up, then a little bit more, and then a little bit more. Go straight to the high flow and the non-rebreather, get their SATs up, and then you can start weaning it down instead. That is much more appropriate. The next device is a Venturi mask. This is a high flow device also. The adapters are color coded and they also will tell you what percentage of oxygen you'll give your patient and what flow to set it on. Usually from two liters a minute to 15 liters per minute. The device delivery is 24 to 55% depending on the brand of the Vinny mask. It gives a very reliable percentage of oxygen. So that way if you've, if you've already weaned them down from a non-rebreather, you can start at 55% on the Vinny mask. Once their sats are stable, then or if you get a blood gas and, and that's looking good, then you can turn them down to the next level. Turn them down to 40%, then 35%, then 30 and so forth. The nasal cannula is a low flow device, usually one to six liters a minute. For pediatrics, it does go much lower, but you need a pediatric flow meter, and it's usually 0.25 liters per minute up to one liter per minute. But for an adult, one to six liters a minute, six is a lot of flow going through there. Uh, usually above four liters a minute, no matter what, you want to put the bubble humidifier on there, or put the bubble humidifier on there if they, if they complain about a dry nose. It's good for long-term use, and for people with just a low O2 need. Don't try to document the nasal cannula with a percentage of oxygen. I know they have little formulas to, to guess, but don't. Documented in liters per minute. Patient is on a nasal cannula at two liters a minute. Depending on how big of a breath they take, how fast they breathe, it's, you're not gonna get a natural percentage from a nasal cannula. Just chart it in liters per minute. A high flow nasal cannula is a relatively new device. It is for people with a high O2 demand. It's really for special use. I wouldn't use this in emergency. The flow rate is six liters a minute up to 60 liters a minute. This is more for a patient with a very high O2 demand that is gonna be using it for a long time or that has been using it for a long time, usually in an acute care environment, but the mask is uncomfortable. It's a pain to use if you're trying to eat. This will give them that high flow delivery through their nose, but it, it does have special tubing. It's a lot thicker, it allows for higher flow, and you have to have a special humidification device. It's very important because you don't wanna burn their nasal mucosa or dry them out. Okay, for more specifics on any of these devices, I'll have some other videos coming out. Please check them. If you like these videos, be sure to comment, click like, or, and subscribe. Okay, thank you so much.